Well, I decided that this channel, Thomas Sheridan 2, has been not getting much love lately, so I decided to upload the video onto this channel today. It's uh, Saturday morning, it's the beginning of November, the 4th or something like that. Whatever. You'll have all the... Those types aren't coming on now. But anyway, uh, it's it's chilly today. It's, uh, it's very autumnal, it's very pretty. There's definitely a, a chill in the air. I was uh, I was talking to the people from Magi Magical Egypt. You've all seen their videos and films. They're, they're phenomenal. They're produced to an extremely high level. And I've done work with them on the past. And I'm doing this work with them now. And I was featured on a segment on magic. And uh, I was talking to Venice. And she says to me, how do you want to be described in your bio? And... She was saying something like, you, know, you, you do so many things that you're not, okay, you, you're, you write books, you make films, but the, the, the number of other topics that you're into is enormous, you know, and I, I'm trying to rack my, my head to see what am I, and we came up with a title that I'm very pleased with, because it suits what I do perfectly, and it's alternative folklorist. So I'm going to include alternative folklorist in my bios from now on, you know, author, filmmaker, alternative folklorist, because that covers everything like the interest in the occult, the interest in serial killers, the interest in historical mysteries, the, in, in, the interest in landscape mysteries, the in, interest in Jungian psychology, you know, the sort of like synchro mysticism, Hauntology, forty and paranormal. It it covers all that stuff. So uh, I'm going to officially include that in my title from now on, alternative folklorist. So thank you, uh, thank you, Magical Legion folks, for suggesting that. Uh, I, I'm very comfortable with that, and uh, I'm very I'm very alternative in the in the truth. You see, the thing is with like a lot of that when you hear the word folklore. And it is true. It's the same old ground being covered over and over again. It's usually like, you know, traditions or in a certain area or, you know, landscape mysteries or that kind of thing or mysteries that happen in the landscape. And they're generally agrarian. They're generally, you know, countryside, or that kind of thing with sort of a historical precedent. And that's all great. I love that stuff. And I, I include that in my own work. But folklore is something that hasn't really been allowed to develop into the modern age. So you like you look at the world today, even things like the last few years, that's folklore. You know, the people who resisted the uh, the Britney Spears concert, you know, that's that's folklore. Even the use of this kind of vernacular, uh, this code language, this palaver, this kind of hobo language that people like, well, I've invented other people have picked up in this context on this on the subjects uh, is is a, is is modern, you know it's it's the it's the folklore of the now it's, it's and it's alternative it's not you know it's it's what people think don't think is folklore but it really is and i was looking at the work myself and sarah doing hocus focus and that's it's it's, it's it's nearly all of especially last night's show which you'll see on sunday it's nearly all alternative folklore what we do and i think a big part of that is the whole deep town thing cuz both of us come from like uh, i wouldn't say disadvantage well i was probably disadvantaged but poor inner city urban you know 1960s brutalist landscapes and uh, high-rise towers that kind of thing and uh, shopping precincts lots of concrete very sort of eastern european trapped in western europe type thing and i think that's play that that's that's you couldn't apply like traditional folklore to that because and you know i was even telling the stories the stories there but i was with jerry and o'neill a few weeks ago doing a talk in dublin and we, we cut out through ballymun and the areas i grew up in and it's changed an awful lot it's much more heavily populated now and just about every space has been filled in with buildings or shops or something but i was just pointing out this is where that guy you know got the holy water from the font to uh to cook his heroin in the, in the church and you know characters i knew and that, i realized well that's alternative folklore too that's just as valid 
<clears throat> in the modern sense, in the folkloric sense, is the story of some guy who saw a fairy back in such a day or this kind of thing. It's 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 all it's all it's all relevant because it becomes the you know, the the archetypes of the day become the the archetypes of the future. Nothing ever stays stagnant. And I think a lot of my work is, is alternative, having like been born out of the kind of punk rock thing and then the sort of like alternative music, the alternative music kind of carry on worldview. You know, it's just, it's also a way of distinct, refining my, the, the bringing people to my, a lot of people come to my work and they, they're shocked. They, 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 they're they shocked by the, the, I've no limits on what I talk about. So they, they, you know, you have people who come in from the truth or sphere and they'll hear me saying things like, I, I haven't seen any hard proof of this or that, that things are, you know, are, you know, are, you know, are, you, know are, you know, I don't believe in things that are central to that, a lot of that. And, you know, you get rid of them and then you refine it to an, an audience who likes, okay, this guy's interesting. Uh, I don't know what he's on about, but I'm, I'm going to stay listening. So you build an audience that way. So my audience I, is completely alternative because they're people who are not fixed into one position of anything. Um, that's why it's so, you know, it's such, it's so broad and attracts people from all over of different, you know, races, religions and different classes and stuff like that because... I'm not specific. I don't specialize in any one thing. I might for a while, because something that interests me, but then to be something else that interests me in the back, I'll bring to the fore and then promote that for a while. So it's all alternative. It's, you know, it's, it was a perfect, perfect uh, description for my work, alternative folklorist, alternative folklore. So I'm gonna really push that from now on as my, kind of my, in my bio. And even my the satirical work I do, this, 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 that's that's part of my kind of an ex, an extension of my interest in chaos magic and discordia, and that's kind of like just the craft, but taken into the modern thing. And if you, you see my Facebook page, it's, it's nearly nothing but satire. And there's some people that go on there and they just don't understand it, they just don't get it. And you get a lot of that with the like the kind of truth to progress. And then the other ones, I'm not saying all truthers are like that, of course, but the others will piss themselves laughing or will get the kind of subtle nuances, subtext I'm trying to push through. You know, it's very important, very important. And uh, Christian Morris paid me a very high compliment there the other day. He said, Thomas Sheridan has helped, helped rearrange the furniture inside my head. And that's good because that's what I want to do. I don't want to, I want to, I want to help people rearrange the furniture inside their head rather than me doing it or allowing them to keep the furniture in the same position, uh, allowing them to, uh, to expand their horizons by saying, yeah, it's okay to look into the work of Marina Abramovich and find stuff in there that's actually very interesting. It's all right to say, you know, I don't know, look at other things, look at, it's, you know, like you have like channels now in the truth or spirit who now say, I'm not, you can't listen to music anymore that you, that you love growing up because it's satanic. And I would say, well, look into what satanic really means. So it's okay to look into Anton LaVey and the Temple of Set with Michael Aquino, just have a look and see what it's about. And I, I'd like to think I helped a lot of people get out of the, the a rut that they might've been stuck in and as a result said, God, that, that's interesting. Maybe I'll give Sheridan's thing a go. I'll have a look anyway. Could be surprised. And then I'll go, oh, it's bullshit. Oh, it's, it's, it's really interesting. Oh, it's, it's, it's bullshit and it's interesting. But if, that, if, if I can get people to like expand or broaden their horizons, that, that makes me very happy. It makes me very happy to, you know, and... Uh, and that's alternative folklore because I'm, I'm I'm taking the the sort of the 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 world they live in and saying you know there's an alternative way of looking at it. I think I first did this years ago with Crowley when I was on when I, you know it was it was like around years ago around the time Defeated Demons came out, which is ba you know obviously the title is based on the you know the the book of the law, the last of the the, the last of the the demons defeated and I switched it around and um, I was you know I had people saying you know it was so bad back then the truth is fair that people would say things like you 
I don't like you, Thomas Sheridan, because you use satanic phrases like as above, so below. You know, this kind of thing. And, um, and so I think the first one was Crowley, and, and my, the reaction was unbelievable. Um, people were saying that I was endorsing cooking babies and eating them and stuff like that. And I, you know, they all had this attitude. It's all the Chinese whispers in the old scene. Oh, Crowley, you know, has sex with little children and eats them and sacrifice them how do you know i heard it on this podcast how does that guy on that podcast know it oh he heard it on another podcast how does he know that the other podcast oh he heard it on a woman's podcast and it goes as chinese whispers and i said oh, okay where does it actually say this that you that crowley cooked and ate young babies and they go in the book of the law and i go okay show me the paragraph they can't find it because it doesn't exist. What's in the book of the law is that Crowley is giving a history of human sacrifice. Yes, it existed from Baal times, from pagan times, right up into the present, which in wars are. And uh, he mentions that the, the most powerful sacrifice was considered that of a young boy, a virgin young boy. He didn't say he was doing it. He didn't say he it was just like he was giving. He was giving alternative folklore. He was just pointing out this many this, some of the stuff that was in there. Uh, Fraser's the Golden Bell, you know, and the other one, which which cults in Western Europe? These are two classics of like modern literature, published over a hundred years ago, and they are they contains the same thing Crowley was saying, but because Crowley was a, was the first troll, and he, he, you know I had one guy saying, but isn't Crowley the most evil man that ever lived? And I says why? Uh, because it's it, it says he's the wickedest man in the world. So I said like so. He's worse than Stalin. He's worse than Chairman Mao. He's worse than Pol Pot. See, they don't think, you know. They they, they, they they just see the banner. So my job was to take them on Crowley and say, you know, Crowley had an awful lot going for him. We probably wouldn't have had, like, the fantastic rock and roll world we have without him. He kind of invented the 20th century in many ways. And um, he was an excellent poet. And he was incredibly funny. And so he was an incredibly funny individual. He had things about him that were not nice, not likable, but so on. Everyone has that. And uh, he just amplified, he was the first kind of, sh you know, he, he, he kind of even invented shock art because he made himself a, a work of shock art with those articles, gi giving animals, journalists in the Daily Express quotes that they could po post that he knew. He was playing the Oscar Wilde thing. The only thing worse than being talked about is not being talked about. And he, you know, this is how he, he got people into his life. And this is how he managed to, you know, this, you know, this, this whole thing, he's a drug addict who died all alone. It's not true. Yeah, he was, he was taking huge amounts of heroin because he had very bad asthma. And believe me, heroin worked. I'm never shooting it up, but heroin does work for asthma fantastically. And um, he had, a, you know, he had a, 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 a funeral with people, his friends and everything that were all there. And you hear all this nonsense. And I say, and then they say, oh, okay, that's interesting. I didn't know that. I just assumed that Crowley was the most evil man that ever lived to eight little boys. Where did you hear that? I heard it on a podcast. Where did the guy who made that podcast hear it? He got it from another podcast. You know, the, the Chinese whispers. So I like to see myself as the person who interrupts the Chinese whispers within, you know, this alt scene. And it says, no, hold on a second. It's a bit different. Have you looked? Have you, I've actually tried looking at yourself rather than repeating what someone else said. And I think... I don't know how many people I've got to think differently, but they do think, lots of them do think differently. And I do get messages down again saying, you know, you really opened my mind up and my life is much more interesting now. You've opened me up to things like Lovecraft and you've opened me up to things like magic, which I just thought was devil worship. You've opened me up to, you know, ancient mysteries that there was probably, there absolutely was a great civilization in the past that vanished. I used to believe in the ancient aliens bullshit that I used to think that all that stuff could only have been built by aliens, but it never crossed my mind that it was probably ancient human technology until the way you described it. Now, I wasn't the first to come up with that, but I put that idea into the head in such a way. So I deprogrammed them from the, the narrative. The, see, there's an alter, there's a, there are alternative narratives as much as there are um, mainstream narratives. Now, it, it's, it's something happened with the, 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 what you call the truth scene that's gone... An element of it has gone completely into mental illness, into extreme psychosis. And it really started with the flat earth thing. 
And then he went from that to the big trees to Teteri and all these nonsense like airplanes have no fuel in them. And now they're let, those, that same bunch have went down that rabbit hole into that absolute darkness and stupidity and ignorance are now claiming that the Celtic triple spiral sign is paedophiles giving each other code. I mean, it's, 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 it's terrifying. You know, I, 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 I consider my job in this scene is to grab them and say, don't go down that path. Don't fall into that abyss. You know, don't become an ignorant person you know, Calvinist, you know, Neo-Lutheran and, and, you know, Puritan in the modern age. And I think, I think I've been good at that. I think, I, I think I'm good. And a huge part of that can be things like humour. Because satire and humour can break a spell. Big time. Big time it can break a spell. And uh, th these people don't realise that when they're going these, down these crazy rabbit holes that they're, they're spellbound. They're spellbound by rather sinister people on the internet who use NLP and try to make them believe that because you believe this crazy bullshit, I believe uh, you're part of a special community. I don't tell people to believe in anything. I throw, I, you know, and I also don't censor myself. You know, not like the, 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 my fascination with certain elements, well, a, a good bit of the work of Marina Abramovich literally caused mass psychosis last week. Uh, lots of people unsubscribed, not lots, but you know, a few, and loads, and not loads, but a good few, a few left my Facebook social media. My attitude to them is, well, goodbye. You're not ready for this yet. The others are like, uh, you know, they don't, you know, there's all kinds of ways to react into it, but it's like uh, others are now saying, you know, actually, way more are now saying. Gosh, the way you describe it, Thomas, in relationship to our life is, is interesting. And it's just like the Crowley thing 10 years ago when I started talking about it. I, you have to deprogram people. See, the, 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 because, of the, because the alternative, this sort of truth or scene, it ultimately comes from American Bible Belt. Things like um, Southern Baptist churches, um, things like the Posse Comitatus, which was a a kind of a weird kind of Christian identity. Christian identity is a big one. And the Christian identity movement and that kind of Bible belt, hellfire brimstone thing is really where the likes of Bill Cooper came from. Now, I'm saying Bill Cooper refined it much better. And Bill Cooper has left a body of work that within there are some real gems. And so I'm not knocking Bill Cooper. I'm just saying that's the world he emerged from. That's the world that, you know, later Alex Jones emerged from, and they've carried that into what we call now the alternative or the truth scene. But that was its roots. And uh, this is why it has a heavy Christian aspect to it. And this is why you can't, like, it's very difficult to deprogram a lot of the Americans in that scene from the Christianity thing. Because, you know, I mean, they, they say that Americans are addicted to jingoism. They're, they're not. They're addicted to Jesus. That's, that's their big thing, you know. And they just can't break so many of them from that, even when they become like, you know. They, they, they still think like that the answer to the globalization is Christianity when Christianity was the first globalization. And you can't tell them that because they go nuts. And uh, they think, you know, everything is satanic or masonic, all, you know, this kind of nonsense. And they can't individually select one thing and go, oh, you know, that, you know, like, well, I looked in the chemtrails. That's a lot of bullshit. Uh, there's really nothing in there I can't, that I can put my finger on to prove it. But then I looked into, you know, the need, the Britney Spears um, or, or an A, and that's absolutely this weird shit going on in there. Or I looked into the secret space program and there's some weird shit going on in there. You know, this kind of thing. Or I looked into the Teteria thing. It's all, it's all bollocks. It's just that people don't understand European cities and how they're built. Or think that world fairs were made with real buildings when they were plywood and this kind of thing. And, you know, that kind of thing. So there's that's alternative again. Alternative folklore. You have to... The discernment that you don't have to join the, cl the club completely... And believe all the things. You see, you have these element of truthers who literally, I've seen it with my own eyes. They'll watch a video and are made 
on YouTube about anything, right? And they will believe it absolutely and completely for a month. And when Crusade posting it all over their social media saying, this is what's really going on. And then a month later, a video will be produced that contradicts 100% what the previous video they believed in and then claim that the guy who made the video or the woman who made it is a shill. And they instantaneously do a, a 180 degree turn and they go, oh, I now believe this. Uh, this like, well, it's like a switch. They, there's there's a, a YouTube video or a rumble video will switch them from one extreme to the other without a hint of irony or an, an ability to discern. They, they're like, they, they need, it's like, you know, in America, you have, I remember when I was in Atlanta, they used to have this strip outside the city and it was like literally one church after the next. There were the houses that were converted to the storefront. You know that song by the, the I think it's the Temptations. You know, Papa was a storefront, you know, he was a storefront preacher. It is kind of thing. And uh, yeah, it was like that. And the, and there's people in those, that, that in that part of the world who go to the Church of the Redemption and Everlasting Life for a few months and then they say, well, I'm bored of that minister. I'm going to go to the, net, the church next door, which will be the, you know, something called, called the Global Faith Foundation. And that's what these truthers are like. They go from one storefront preacher to the next on YouTube alternative videos. And they don't th sit back and say, instead of jumping from one and believing entirely and then rejecting and then believing the next one entirely, they don't practice the sermon. I like to try, try and help believe that I help some people break that cycle. Uh, because I, it's it, because there's so much enjoyment in looking into something that you're told you didn't look into. This is how you learn. This is how you evolve as a person. And you can there's there's, there's great power in challenging your own assumptions and beliefs. Tremendous power in them. Enormous, you know. And. Uh, it unleashes enormous amounts of creative energy and intellectual energy and psychic energy. It releases enormous amounts of it. And um, this this broadcast is turning into a Vaughn almost, a visual Vaughn, Vaughn TV, Vaughn Vlog. Maybe because I'm on the new channel, uh, the old, the, the, this, this alternative channel. Ooh. Yeah, fascinating. I've been, I've been looking at things this week. Like, for instance, I'll give you an example. I can't stand the band The Eagles. Absolutely, absolutely can't stand them. Uh, I, I mean, I know they have a couple of maybe one or two good songs, but I, I just do not understand the popularity of that, basically what is a, country, a, a, a standard country and Western group, okay? Uh, with a few, I know, a few odd songs here and there are not bad, but... I like that one, and it wasn't even, uh, you know, it was the one at the very end of their career. Uh, I know it's crazy, up all night, tearing our love apart. You say you're leaving, but that ain't right. Uh, I can't tell you why. Uh, that, Timmy Schmidt was the singer on that. I do like that song. It's almost a soul, so it's a beautiful soul song. But uh, everything else I can't stand. Rubbish songs like, you know. The new kid in town awful awful things but i can remember like in the height of my revulsion of that kind of american rock i was listening to the radio one day and on this thing this, this thing comes on to, on and it was the boys of summer by don henley i didn't even know who don henley was or he was even in the eagles i didn't even know who's the guy who sang hotel california and i was like Oh, that's good. And, it's, and I was listening to a song the other day, and The Boys of Summer is an amazing piece of music. Amazing. Not just the guitar playing, but even the way that Don Henley sings it and phrase it. You know, that, you know, out on the road today, I saw a dead head sticker on a Cadillac. That's fantastic songwriting. That's, out, that's outstanding songwriting. And uh, I didn't even know who he was. And then someone said to me, you know, he was in the Eagles. I said, get the fuck out of it. And he goes, yeah, he was. So, you know, that's alternative. That was like where, you know, if I was a complete gobshite and I'd say, oh, I don't, I can't stand that song, The Boys of Summer, because he was in the Eagles. I hate the Eagles. No, I, I rec enough to recognize that there was something good came out of that that I actually was like, wow, I'm into that. Definitely into that. You know, 
So that's 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 a lot of that is the Abrahamic mind virus, where you have to kind of stick with the creed, and it bleeds into everything in life. Where you cannot live, you can't have this smorgasbord existence, which is the best way to live. Yeah, you know those. You know, treat knowledge as an all-you-can-eat Chinese buffet. No, don't actually, because you don't want to gorge on on any one thing. Treat knowledge like a sushi bar or a smorgasbord and you go well i like a bit of this i like a bit of that that wouldn't be for me that one for me from everything you know meat fish vegetables whatever you know tapas that's another example you know he used a food analogy it's using food analogies i haven't had breakfast can you tell and um that's how you approach the knowledge you know the, the learning discovery and and then every subject you're into you know, you have to have, you know, you have to go what resonates with you rather than saying, oh, I'm not going to listen or look into any of that stuff because it's satanic. You know, that kind of thing. That, that's, that's, a, that's a crazy way to live. That, you know, I mean, I can understand people not want, like, I, I mean, both myself and Sarah are fascinated by serial killers, but it's not the killings. It's not that stuff. It's like what makes them what they are. And then the kind of folkloric elements that, you know, like the Zodiac Killer or the Moore's Murderers, the powerful folklore that's developed around them. I mean, in many ways, say, Hindley and Brady, and you add to that Jimmy Savile, are sort of real like life embodiments of Germanic folktales, you know, like the really dark German f folktales as they were originally told, you know, like Hansel and Gretel and how they really are before Disney got them. You know, and they, they came out of things that really happened and they were then used as mechanisms. If you read Bruno Bettelheim's uh, The Uses of Enchantment, that the book shows how these were these stories were used to train children about the dangers of the world. Like Little Red Riding Hood is really about menstruation. And uh, Hansel and Gretchen is about pedophilia. You know, sweets from a stranger. And of the... Uh, you couldn't tell a kid as a child directly that these things existed, but you could put it in there. Then yeah, the Morrigan just flew by, beautiful hooded crow. But um, you couldn't tell these things directly to children, so you told them, in, you conveyed them in allegory and fairy tales. So they sunk into their subconscious mind. This is the thing that the Germanic people are a very cultured people. You know, I mean, it's no, it's no uh, accident. That the Germanic world gave us the likes of like you know Goethe and Mozart and Beethoven. It's this just you know these are deeply cultured people, and this you know they were ahead of the curve and so many things like that. But it exists you know read your Joseph Campbell. This stuff existed all over the world. But yeah, I'll be with you in a second. I'm making a video. But <laughs> my friend David there. But yeah. Uh, I'll stop this now because I want to go have a, a cup of tea with my friend and we'll talk later, okay? So let that sink into your head and I'll make another video later. Take care.